TV show Moment of Truth. So stay tuned. Enjoy the show. Enjoy the TV show. All right. So um, another question from my social media handle: um, How do we manage values that contradict values of society? Okay. One leave in. So the person is actually saying, how do um, we manage values that contradict values of a society one leave? Right. So my answer to that is, mm. your values define who you are. Okay. Society also has got its values. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, that which is highly esteemed by society... Mm may not be what God approves. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So, you need to look at your values, and at the end of the day, whatever values you have should align with divine values. Okay. So, look at your values. Is it in the perfect will of God? Okay. If the answer is yes, and society is bringing in anything that contradicts what God wants you to do, you stand with your value. Oh. Moses yeah. chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin yeah. for a season. So it's all about who you are. And those values define who you are. Okay, so what if um, I have a there is something I'm very passionate about and someone wants to do the same thing I am passionate about and the person comes to me for um, coaching the person or um, um, for instance l let me give a scenario there was an interview I had recently and uh, the person gave some tips about maybe how to start up a business okay. then in the course of editing the video uh, he gave a business idea this idea is great so why don't I take that part out and then keep that one for myself then later I sat down okay I say I want to touch lives, but then do I share what will make me grow with someone else? Yeah. Is, is, is this going to help um, the things I'm passionate about and the things I want to achieve in life? Do, I, I hope you get yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Now, this question reminds me of Paul the Apostle okay. when he was talking to his other colleagues. Okay. And he was emphatic that I kept nothing that was profitable back from you. Okay. We have success and we have significance. Okay. Success is what you have achieved. Okay. But we need to understand that we are not in this world for our own sake. Okay. We are here to help others. Okay. So when you begin to help others, then you move from success to significance. Okay. So use what you have, your talent, your skill, your knowledge, to help others. Okay. And Job would ask you, how have you helped others? Okay. So personally, mm. there are a lot of things that I share with people. Knowledge, skill, yeah. whatever. But then, I don't say that they're going to compete with me because mm. I see myself as unique okay we can't have the same passion very true my passion is different from your passion because we are created differently yeah. we have different missions in life yeah. so the fact that i'm sharing with you and you want to copy I, I don't bother at all okay okay right all right so um our next question uh what is your take on linking personal values with rules attributed to the divine, and um, is it the ultimate source of values? Okay. Yeah, so. Okay, so by the mention of divine, mm. I'm thinking of God, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good. So, my answer to this question is very simple. Mm. Your personal values must align with divine values. Okay. And... If you would permit me, I'm looking at Romans chapter 12, okay. verse 2. Okay. It says, 
be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Only then would you be able to prove what is good, that's value, acceptable, that's okay. value, and perfect will of God. So your values, personal values, must always be in alignment with divine values. Okay, okay. That's the only way you stay in the perfect will, will of God, God. Okay. and not in his permissive will okay. because he's given us the power of choice. Okay. So you choose whether to stay in his perfect will or yes. in his permissive will. Okay. But then, are there complications when you decide to bridge the values? Are you going to have complications or challenges when you bridge any value of yours? Of course. Okay. Because... Those values define you. Mm -hmm. They drive your behavior. Okay. And John Maxwell said in one of his books that your values are the soul of your leadership. Okay. And they drive your behavior. Okay. So if you compromise your values, you are hurting your soul. Very true. You are hurting your behavior. Okay. You put up negative behavior, negative attitude, negative character. Okay. And who would want to engage or trust somebody with negative character? No way. So it hurts you. Okay. All right. So um, another question. What role does the family, school, and such institutions play or must play in developing such values? Okay. Yeah. So let me take that off a school. I strongly believe that mm. schools should have values okay. inculcated in their curricula. Okay. So they teach the children at a very early stage, stage. values. Okay. Now in the case of their family, personally, I teach my kids values. Okay. So like this one-on-one -on -one engagement okay. we're having, I do same with my kids. Okay. I do PowerPoint presentation. Okay. So they sit, I'm, uh, I'm by the screen, and then I'm talking to them about values, integrity, okay. character, forgiveness, okay. self-worth, attitude, hmm. everything about values. Okay. I teach them leadership. Okay. And when we are done, I ask them questions. So what would you do to make the world a better place? And they answer. Other times, do I organize um, Google Meet sessions okay. for kids below 10? Okay. So we need to teach them at that early stage. And that is the contribution that families can make. Okay, so let, you let do, me check. I do, yeah. Okay, let me check this in. Um, we are looking at bringing up. Um, a responsible generation yeah. after us. What role do you think the government can play in helping us develop or bring up responsible kids? You know, the children are not just for the mom and the dad. Tomorrow, when they grow up, for instance, the president we have today, if other people didn't join hands to support him and also um, help in training him, I don't think he will get to where he is today. So what role can the government or any other institution play in bringing up responsible children who have great values that can um, have an impact on the generation of Zaras? So values should be inculcated into every aspect of government machinery. Okay. To the schools into um, hosp everywhere okay and this has been done in various countries yeah. costa rica and other places yeah. the john maxwell team is doing a great work yeah. in terms of teaching values okay. and the organized round tables and so mm. on okay right okay so if we introduce this values curriculum mm. in schools before they come out of school mm. They know what it means to be 100% responsible. Okay. They know what it means to be committed to a particular cause. Okay. They understand character. Okay. They understand integrity, mm. that my words should always match my actions. We need to teach values in every aspect of society. Okay. Right from the presidency to the lowest level. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll go to our next question. 
uh, what values should I install in my children? Yeah. And what is the best way to go about it? This is from um, the president of the um, Ghana Internet Service Providers okay. Association. Yeah. Okay. So I already indicated what I do for my kids. Okay. okay. So my projector is there. Okay. And I spend time to put together the slide. Okay. So I use the John Maxwell curriculum okay. to teach them values. Okay. Okay? So I teach them about integrity. Mm -hmm. It's important that your words are always matching your action. Okay. Model consistency. Okay. What you believed in today, mm. you don't come back to tell me tomorrow that you no longer believe and that, that so long as it's positive. Okay. So model consistency. Okay. Be honest in your conversation. Okay. Attitude. When you challenges would come, difficult times would come. What attitude do you exhibit? Mm -hmm. At what stage can a mother or parent start inculcating those values into their children? Right from the beginning. <laughs> Okay. You so, know, sometimes they get confused. Children, <laughs> when you're telling them some things, they're like... It doesn't matter. Okay. You have to sow the seed. Okay. Because you are not in the child's mind. Hmm. So you don't know how he or she is able to possess it. Okay. So just sow the seed. Okay. Right? Okay. Who knows? It would grow. But if you don't sow at all, hmm. you don't have any hope of any seed germinating. Okay. So I remember my firstborn when hmm. he came and at that six months or yeah. seven months, whatever, I started handing over books to So like, he'll be sitting in that yeah, baby yeah. chair or whatever, that thing. Okay. Then I'll put a book in front, of in front of him. Then I'll say, say this. I knew he wouldn't be able to yeah. say. Right? And now, he's seven. He'll okay. be eight soon. Okay. So I go back to all those pictures that I took. Mm -hmm. Then he's able to remember, this is balanced scorecard wow. this is financial like he's able to read now okay so it's um a joyful moment yeah because you never know okay so i can always look back to those pictures and then tell him hey even when you were six mm -hmm. months we're doing this now you're seven okay. we can do better than we're doing okay all right um um our next question says is there such thing as global values yeah must one care about such values if there are when do you build personal values yeah my answer to that mm. question is simple okay. values are values okay if i'm in ghana mm -hmm. and i have certain values okay when i move out of ghana i go to america those values don't change yeah I go to Britain. Those values don't change. Hmm. I, maybe I may not agree. Because, um, for instance, let, let's say PV show. Uh, I happen to travel outside the country. You know, the system over there is quite different from here. It may take time for me to get back to the things I was doing before. So then, what if there is a delay? In getting back to those things I was doing before, does it mean I have bridged those values? But don't forget, these are your personal value, things you believed in. Okay. So are you saying that when you are in Ghana, you believed in integrity? So you are in America now, and the American system should affect your integrity? No. That the American system should affect your commitment? No. That the American system should affect your behavior, your attitude, your disposition, your relationship. Mm. Values are Fine. personal values, personal to you. They define who you are. Okay. They drive your behavior. Okay. So instead of allowing the system to change you, why don't you use your personal values, which are in line with divine values, to change the system? Wow. Okay. I'm, I'm sure we are picking um, wonderful tips from this interview. If you are missing out when it comes to your values, I think you really need to relook into things. Some people travel outside, just as I, I just um, said. 
And the thing that because I'm no longer at home, um, a lot of things I used to do have to change, especially when it's very positive. That value is very positive and can have an impact on other people. I think you should never change things because of the environment you find yourself. So we'll get back to Mr. You said you don't like the Mr. <laughs> That's fine. But can I yes, add one thing? Yes, you, you can. So take again, take Daniel, for example. Okay. He went into captivity as a teenager. Okay. So he found himself in Babylon, a different land, a different yeah. country. His parents were not there. Yeah. His family members were not there. Yeah. Did he compromise on his values? A all. big no. Who are you to tell the book at Neza you won't do <laughs> A, B, C? But he believed in his values because he knew that those values were personal to him. Those values defined him. Okay. So, he purposed in his heart that he would not defile defy himself. Okay. And humbly, he told the prince of Enoch that said, I will not defile myself. Okay. Others may, but I cannot. cannot. All right. So uh, we'll go to our next question. Um, with your experiences as a coach, um, what is your take on persons without any form of specific values? Yeah. Um, how would you define such people and what is your take on that? So, a, a lot of people don't have values. Yeah. And, and I, I don't want to say this on one. <laughs> but a lot of people don't have values. We just wake up, we, we enter into a new month, and yeah, anything comes, anything goes. After everything, when the month and We've not really achieved anything. We've not really done anything. And yeah, we are still going on. What's your take on such people? Okay, so you answer the question for me. So, number one, okay. you lose your sense of direction. Anything okay. goes for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And if anything goes for you mm. and you have no sense of direction, you don't grow. Okay. And you lose your purpose in life. Okay. Bottom line, you become average. And it's the reason why a lot of people are in their comfort zones. Mm -hmm. They are not ready to get out of their comfort. They feel so comfortable and they accept the status quo. Okay. So if you want to get out of your comfort zone, you want to have a sense of direction. You want to grow to reach your potential. You must be guided by values. You must be a man or a woman of principles. Okay. All right, so before we leave, um, I have a vision to touch lives. And I want to reach out to people in the rural areas, find out the areas in which we can support, areas we can um, grow or develop. And it's like it's difficult. It's part of my values. There is no money to start. Um, I, we, we just want to get a little help how do I start from nowhere yeah when I want to make an impact how do I start from nowhere yes so we all want to make an impact mm -hmm. and most of the times we are restrained yeah. by resources does it mean we should fold our arms and relax and whatever start in your own little way okay so this year for example I had planned to do a lot of things for the youth, okay. for churches and so many things. And okay. I was doing that before 2020, okay. sometimes using my personal resources, yeah. right? Then COVID-19 shows up. So you're unable to do what you intended to do. Yeah. I'm not sitting back. I'm exploring the virtual option. Okay. And I reach out to parents. Hey, I want to have this values session for the kids. Are you interested so you can bring your, like, get your kids signed yeah. on and then we have it. So I do those virtual sessions and okay. I do it for companies as well. Okay. So the month of June, for example, I organized free leadership for okay. organizations and then for teams. Okay. If I can't come to you in person or... Um, I'm not able to raise the funds to do it and mm. 
a conference center or whatever. Yeah. It can be done virtually. So the point I'm making is start small in your okay. own small way okay. and you can still make the impact. Okay. So um, before we leave, yeah. um, your final words to our audience. Okay. So we'll talk to... Okay. So values are very, very critical. Values drive your behavior. And I've said that your values are the soul of your leadership and they drive your behavior. So if you're going to maintain your values, it is not automatic. You need to be intentional about it. So I leave you with three words as you decide to live intentionally and then stick to your values. The first word is deliberate. Be purposeful. Be intentional about your values. You need to hold your values with all the energy and passion within you. The second word is consistent. You don't stick to one value today and the next day you no longer believe in your own value. Consistency is key. Stick to your values day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. It's a lifelong thing. Then the final one, which is very important, is willful. Value is a matter of choice. You choose to be what you want to be. The power is in your hands. Choose you this day, the kind of person you want to be. Thank you. Thank you for watching the PV show. Choose this day what you want to be. Stay tuned and join us same time next week. Until then, stay safe. Wash your hands with soap under running water. Sanitize your hand regularly. And then make sure you put on your nose mask. Bye.